Peter, we would say if we looked at his life, was not qualified to do this. He wasn't qualified. He was a fisherman. He and his brother Andrew were fishing. And all of a sudden, Jesus walks up. Do you think that that was happenstance? That he walked up to Peter and to Andrew? No, it was a set time.
Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. Now that just begins for us to get a view on what happened to Peter. Peter, we would say if we looked at his life, was not qualified to do this. He wasn't qualified. He was a fisherman. He and his brother Andrew were fishing. And all of a sudden, Jesus walks up. Do you think that that was happenstance? That he walked up to Peter and to Andrew? No. It was a set time. You have a set time. You have a set time. God didn't just think of an idea overnight. He thought of it from the foundations of the earth. You understand? God has a plan for every one of your lives, but the choice is yours. Do you want it or do you want to step over it? Do you want to be like Frank Sinatra and do it your way? Can't do it your way. We've got to do it God's way. So it was a setup. But there was something about Jesus that the word of God says they followed him immediately. They followed him immediately. He says, you're a fisherman? Come with me. I'll make you fishes of men. What if the angel of the Lord approached you on your job and said, Maxine, stop cutting these heads. Stop styling. I want you to come with me and follow me. Do you understand how this would seem impractical, but it was no different? There was something about Jesus that drew him. The anointing that was in him made them drop what they were doing and follow him. Amazing. We see that. They followed him. For three and a half years, they walked with him. They were close to him. They listened to him. But when the Holy Spirit fell that day, three and a half years walking with Jesus didn't do what that one moment did. It changed this disqualified person into the man of God. Peter was sly. Peter had more brawn than brains. He was out there in the front lines. He was weak, yet he was strong. We understand that when he was in the garden. We know the story of when Jesus was praying and he was trying to get the disciples to stay with him. How many know sometimes you're in an emergency room in the middle of the night? Has anybody been there? Yeah. The middle of the night when you think the whole world is sleeping and you just need one person yeah. to agree with you in prayer. It's lonely. He was lonely, Jesus. And he went to the men and he saw Peter sleep and try to nudge him. Could you not tarry with me for this hour? They had no idea. They had no clue. He gave them all the facts, but they could not, it couldn't register within them. He was weak. He fell asleep in the hour that he needed them. He heard the sound coming. The guards were coming for Jesus. And within him, he had a, 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 an anger, a rage, because he thought they were trying to get him. And what did he do? He drew his sword. Went for Malchus's head. He missed and cut off his ear. Are you hearing me? Within him, there was a root of rage. There was a root of anger. Many of you in this room, you don't want to be angry. You don't want to respond in rage, but it's there. Just drive on, on 75 and 41 and see crazy people that have to be in front of you, or, you know, if you're not going fast enough, they just flip you the bird and cut in front of you, and people using guns in cars across the way, shooting into cars, it's rage. And you know something? Peter had it. Peter had rage in him. Maybe it came from his father, Jonah. Maybe Jonah was a, an angry man, because they say that sometimes that iniquity is passed down. 
but it was evident with Peter. Chopped off the ear. And Jesus had to say, you still don't get it? You still don't understand? This is not what we do? They took him away. And Peter, the bold one, the brazen one, the angry one, what did he do? He fell back into the shadows. And Jesus had told him, you know, Peter, you're going to deny me. You'll see. And the rooster will crow three times. Never. Not me. I'll never. I'll take the bullet for you. Has anybody ever told you that? A few people have told me that in the past. I got you covered, Pastor. I'm right there for you. I take a bullet for them. They're nowhere to be found right now. They must have kept the bullets in their pocket because they're not in this house. And so that's what happened with Peter. He said, never. He said, I will not. I, well, sure enough, the first test comes. And he goes into the shadows. And he's hanging around with the wrong people. He's trying to hide himself because, you see, a threat was coming to him. He saw them brutally beating Jesus. He said, if he's, they're doing it to him, they're going to look for the 12. They're going to look for me. I don't want to die. I'm too young. And he ran. And he hid Got himself in the wrong circles. Disqualified. Disqualified. Mistake maker. And then it got to the point where he got so angry, he started to curse back to this young girl. Cursing back. I told you, blankety blank, I am not part of that. Listen, don't go in condemnation this morning because you have loose lips. Don't go in condemnation because the words come out of your mouth. Blech. You say those, those four-letter words. But allow the Holy Spirit to change you. This is what happened to Peter. He denied him. He cursed at him. He fell back. But, somebody say, but. On this given day, the Holy Spirit came into Peter. Do you remember the hour, the moment when you were filled with the Holy Spirit. Does anybody remember that moment? Do you remember when you began to speak in tongues and the power of God came on you? How many can remember that time? Think about it. Now, if the Holy Spirit of God is evident in you and he's alive and he's real, that means that you should be able to do exploits. You should be able to change your environment. It was that infilling, that power, that fire that caused Peter to go beyond himself. He spoke here and he began to speak in verse 14. And you could read it later on. But he absolutely was transformed by none of his own doing. He began to speak and 3,000 were added. 3,000 by this failure by this unqualified person. And I'm telling you that once the Holy Spirit really gets a part of you, it's like Grace said, it's 24-7. It's 24-7 with me, whether I am a pastor, I am just, or I'm a woman of God. Because when I first came down here, just absolutely torn apart, disheveled, nervous breakdown, mentally scattered, on medications, I said, wow, probably I'm done. I'm done. That's it. A failure. Left things in the Northeast. Ongoing disputes. Anger. Rejection. Kicked to the curb. Misunderstood. Lied about. Came down here and I said, that's it. I'm done. I'm really done. And I realized that my only sanity, my only wholeness could be through the word of God. There was medications, listen, eight of them I took a day just not to go into shock with all the data that I had to deal with. But my grandmother, when I was very young, anointed me with the laying on of hands, with a tenacity, that little Italian immigrant. She imparted to me the tenacity not to quit. You say, well, gee, you just don't quit. I can't if I try. I can't quit if I try to quit. Because the spirit 
of perseverance and endurance was placed on me. Is somebody hearing me? And the Holy Spirit who's in me, he takes over. When I first came down, I said, I'm done. And this, my neighbor that I, we lived in Naples, his neighbor came over and she was very, she was very aggressive and successful. And she said, you know something, Lynn? You should really go into real estate because you would do very well in real estate. And I said, yeah, okay. And my daughter came home from work that day. And I said, Dawn, Mary said, that maybe I should look into it. She can get me in. Uh, they were just building the dunes down there. And she said, she can get me in and, and maybe I should go into real estate. And my daughter said, are you kidding me? I said, no, maybe I'm, you ain't done, mom. Just get better, she said, just get better. Why am I saying that to you? Because the gift of God is without repentance. You've all been chosen. You've all been called to do something. No matter how the winds of life knock you around, you come right back to square one again and understand that you've been called and chosen by the Lord God. Is somebody hearing me? It's without repentance. As long as you can wiggle your little finger, you've got the strength and the power. This Peter, this wild man, this maverick, he was able, his shadow was so annoying. Shadow, see shadow? You step into my shadow, healing would come. They would line the streets because Peter was coming to town. If we could just be where he is, are you radiating that kind of power? Because that's what's in you. It's radiation of the Spirit of God in you. When you go to the dentist and they lay that big lead thing on top of you and they go behind a wall, it's because radiation, too much is not good for you. So are you doing the same thing? Is it coming through you? Are you changing the environment? You don't have to open your mouth. When they come into that shop, they should feel the Shekinah all over you. You don't have to open your mouth because if you open your mouth, they're going to get preached to. Just to be in your presence. Just to be in your presence. Just to be in your presence. Are you radiating that power? The same power that sent Peter up to Dorcas's house. Dorcas who made clothing for the poor and she made little outfits for the people in the church. And she died and the whole town was in mourning crying out for Dorcas. And Peter passed through and he heard it. And they said, Dorcas is gone. And the Holy Spirit said, go in there and get that woman up. There's a work for her to do. Does this sound like a fable? It is the truth. He went into Dorcas's house. He went up to that room. He got all the weepers out. How many know when you're waiting for a miracle, get all the negative people away from you. Get all the people that are singing the swan song for you. It's over. It's done. It's finished. Get them all out of your sight. Get yourself surrounded with people that'll believe that it ain't over and God could do. He could work with anything you give him and he can turn your situation around. He said, Dorcas, come on, honey. It's time to get up. And she sat up and she went down and she served the people. That was Peter. Amen. Are you hearing me? That was Peter. When you went to the gate, beautiful, you know the story. A man who sat there for years and years at the gate of the temple and he lived on the alms that were dropped into the plate. But not this day. This day, Peter was so filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, just passing by to get into the temple and the Holy Spirit said, stop, pay attention to this man. And what did he say to him? Silver and gold, I don't have, but what I've got. Sometimes you can't buy. You can't buy sanity. You can't buy peace of mind. All the money in the world, but you've got it in your belly. He said, look at us. Listen, when you're praying with somebody who's troubled, tell that person to look at you right in your eye. I am so sure of what is in here that there's no devil that can stand against me. Do you understand that? You've got the same spirit in you. That means that your rays can melt down 
any demon that's trying to come against you, any devil. Radiation, rays. The story goes on that they just, they, they said, give me your right hand, pull the man up, lame from birth. Do you realize what his legs must have looked like? He began to leap and go into the temple. It was a miracle. It was a miracle. Peter, we can do the same thing. What are you doing to give a witness to what Jesus Christ has done in your life? Are you going through the same old, same old every day, working hard, coming home, getting a little bit of dinner, maybe throwing a wash in, doing a little cleaning, putting the TV on, and seeing uh, what's the new X Factor, and seeing maybe the who's dancing with who. Is that what your night consists of? Come on, I hear you all chuckling because that's what's on TV. Or are you coming home and getting yourself ready? Going online, there was such, T.D. Jakes just had that big conference down there in, in Houston. Anybody catch it online? It was phenomenal. It was just life-giving with Cheryl Brady, who was here in our church two years ago, and, and Cindy Trim. How many are following Cindy Trim? You need to follow Cindy Trim. She declares and decrees, pronounces, annihilates. She is phenomenal. She's on the edge to keep us where we should be. That's what you should be doing. Building yourself up in your most holy faith. It's all about the Holy Ghost. It's all about the Holy Spirit. In closing, Jesus Christ said, greater things, John 14, 12, greater things than these shall you do. What greater things? The greater things were when he walked into homes and sees death. Sees death. When you hear someone's ill, do you feel bad and just want to say, that, you know, we're really praying for you? Or are you really ready to go into that place and pray? You know when people say to me, would you please pray for me? Because I pray. Right now we'll pray. Because, you know, first of all, I don't want to forget. And second of all, the need is there. Jump on the need. Because you have the power inside of you to do exactly what Jesus did, to do exactly what Peter did, to be a book of action person. Yes, you are qualified. Say, I am qualified. Say, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I am able to do exploits. Do you believe that? You've got to believe it. But the only way that comes to pass is if you exercise it. It means you've got to run to the roar of a challenge. You've got to believe that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You've got to believe that. You can't run away from it. You've got to stare it right in the face. Like Peter had that layman do. Peter and John. Today, it's time for you to be infused with the power of the living God. It's time for you to take action. You've been at this place long enough. It's time to take off. How many can say, Pastor, I'm so ready for something new. I'm so ready for a turnaround. I'm so ready to get on with my spiritual life. God is so ready to use you. He's looking for that opportunity to stir up from within you. He's inside of you. I want you to bow your heads with me. Father, we're so grateful this morning that we have been enlightened as to what our power source really is. And we thank you, God, that you've got a, a mocked path for us. We've got assignments every single day, God. Don't let us miss it. Don't let us blow our opportunity to be used by you. First of all, overwhelm us with your love, I pray today. Let love spring up from within us. Let the compassion come to us for humanity. But I pray now, Lord Jesus, if there's anyone in this room that feels you've been just a little derailed, you need to get yourself back on track. Jesus Christ has got to be premier in your heart. He's got to be Lord of your life, not just an assistant, but the God of your life. I want to pray with you right now. You need to have Jesus enthralled in your very being. Anybody here, I need that, Pastor. I need to get my life right. I need to have Jesus Christ as Lord. I want to give myself over to him. Anybody, raise your hand quickly. I'll pray with you. Anybody in the room? Anybody at all? 
Well, that's good because now you're ready for an infusion. You're ready for an infusion. If you desire to have that force, the force from another world, just absolutely take authority over every situation through that power, I want you to stand. God, I want an infusion of the Holy Ghost. I want an infusion. I need you. I need you so bad in my life. And I need your power. I don't want to just exist. Now, I want you to get a hold of your neighbor's hand. I believe something is going to take place. I believe that the Holy Spirit of God is going to so touch you that he's going to infuse you right to the marrow of your bone. You're going to be overwhelmed by the surge of energy that you're going to receive. You're going to receive it right now. As they waited, something happened. I want you just to pray in the Holy Ghost with me. Because if you pray in the Holy Ghost, you leave this earth and you get into the realm where you negotiate, you negotiate what has to happen. Come on, let it come up from your belly right now. Now, some of you, it's been a while. Open your mouth and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Right now, open your mouth. It's been a while. He's in you. We just have to change the atmosphere. Be infused right now in the name of Jesus. It'll go from hand to hand. It'll go from hand to hand. You've just got to believe that the Holy Spirit of God wants above all to be activated in you. Let me hear you. He wants to radiate through you. He wants to make a difference in your life, your marketplace, your family, your friends. He wants you to be radioactive. He wants you to be radioactive. Every place you go, there will be a change. People will see you coming and they will back off of the power that emanates through you. Sema, Dobo Sondo. Come on, negotiate with him right now. Call his will into your life. Let the will of God be done. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Hila Basondo Nebeke Tama Nanana.